The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing essence of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, and it is a critic of thought and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, accurately handling the word of truth. Today, once again, we shall look into the subjects of the divinity and the deity of Christ, and the way how these cults are claiming that Christ is not divine, and the things what he has spoke, they have been sent by Father, and he speaks not what except the direction of the precept of the Father is, but not of his own. So these claims which have been claimed by Zachary Mike in one of his videotape, and as we continue to answer Sheikh Hamad Dida regarding the Loth and his wife, and the things which has been claiming. So we shall have a word of silent prayer, be believers, uh, by confession of our sins through 1 John 1, 9, which is called as a rebound, which is a standard operating procedure for having a right true fellowship with God. Because in the example, what Lord has said to us, when in the, in the Gospel of John, in chapter 12, whatsoever I hear from Father, that's what I speak to you. That is a clear indication for us as a believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, that no unholy thing or no human viewpoint could embrace us while we are having the fellowship with the Word of God. So the only one thing which could be with us is to have a right and true fellowship with Him under the controlling mental ministry of God, the Holy Spirit, because it is not the human nature what we have to speak. It is the divine things and the divine nature, the things pertaining to God, what we deal. We have to be always under the controlling mental ministry of God, the Holy Spirit. So keeping this in mind, we shall have a silent word of prayer, and then we shall start up your study. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the privilege that you have given to us to have fellowship with you through the Word. Greater is the one that is in us than the one who is in this world. Help us to understand your word when our obedience is prepared so that we could pull down all the imaginations of false cults and we could give them a right answer from the word of God. At the same time, my Lord, it is your direction, your percept we have to follow on this earth. It is not our own thinking. So in return, you have given us your controlling mental ministry of God, the Holy Spirit indwelling in us so that whosoever confess those sins and be under the controlling mental ministry of God, the Holy Spirit, by not grieving Him, nor squelching Him. We shall have a continued fellowship with Thee, and we could know the deep and mystery things of God. Because a natural or soulish mind cannot understand the things which are quite essential for us to know. Because Your Word is eternal, so that we have to speak Your Word to be the same. Because what we bound in the earth is also bounded in the heaven. So, Father, help us to speak Thy Word which is more accurate, which are in accord to Your holy mind and in accord to Your holiness and not in accord to our own understanding or to our own human nature viewpoint or the false interpretation of the scriptures as many false teachers have been practicing heresy in this Christendom. So, keeping this in mind, we ask that God the Holy Spirit enlighten us in the things which are quite essential for us to answer back the claims claimed by such kind of cults, even to look into the subject and we could learn some of the deep things of the mystery doctrine of the church age, so that Christ Jesus might be glorified for the very purpose for He has kept alive on this pilgrimage tour. In Christ's name we pray, Father. Amen. As we have been noticing some of the things in the previous tapes, Sheikh Hamad Didad was been asking about the things of Loth, uh, uh, the, the, the recordings in the Bible which are not accurate from the Word. So we have answered them back, and now we shall look some of the things, what happens to a dichotomous and trichotomous person, since we have been continuing in the subject. So, keeping this in mind, who is a dichotomous person? A dichotomous is a person who has only a body and a soul. A trichotomous is a person who has a body, soul, and a human spirit, activated human spirit. So this activation of the human spirit will occur when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is the moment when Christ has told for us very clearly, until unless you have been born again, you cannot even see far less trying to enter into the kingdom of God. So to be born again, it's in the spirit and in the water. The water represents the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, not baptisms as other people think. And the, God, and, 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 the, and the spirit represents your activated human spirit, which is always there. Until unless you have been born again, you are still in darkness. So Christ said in the Gospel of chapter 12, saying that while I am still here, the little is a time for it to be in the lightness. And if you don't be in the lightness, you shall be in the darkness forever and forever. So it's in the privacy of a priesthood or in the, in the privacy of our soul that we make a decision when we believe the Gospel. And whosoever replaces or unplaces or repudiates Lord Jesus Christ shall be put into the eternal lake of fire forever and forever. That's what the Word teaches to us. So keeping this in mind, it's my dogmatic emphasis for you to be born again. How to be born again? To, by simple act of faith by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is called as a reborn. So, reborn or born again. So, regeneration. That meant to say that once again you are born spiritually so that the deep things of the mystery, of the mystery things of the word could be understood. And until and unless you have been born again, by having a premises of your own dichotomous nature, you cannot or you cannot even know 
the deep things of the word because by claiming and sitting outside in the darkness room you think that you can understand the light the light and the most effectual things which Christ has spoken to them because the disciples of Christ himself they couldn't understand they were still dull of hearing and they were not given the Holy Spirit till that moment but now in this unique dispensation of the church age the whole Bible has been completed through the revealing ministry of God the Holy Spirit after the resurrection and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ into the heaven and sending back his help called as paraclete guide who has revealed us unto all truth the all truth including the apocalypse wherein we could understand the revelation point of view what is going to happen after the rapture of the church and the tribulation and the millennium and the second advent of our Lord Jesus Christ on this earth and once again judging this new heaven and the new earth by the way of throwing out all the things of the millennium and giving us a new heaven and the new earth. So there are so many things which have been clearly revealed to us and those things cannot be understood in the human energy or in the human mind. No flesh and blood can teach you those things because it is the ministry of God, the Holy Spirit, and only God, the Holy Spirit, can teach you those things. So it has been always my request to my believers who are preaching, who are hearing, or who are witnessing, or are ambassadors for, for Lord Jesus Christ in the privacy of the priesthood to confess their sins as per 1 John 1 9 and come back and stay in fellowship with God so that when you are in out of fellowship God the Holy Spirit will never control you so you have to be in the fellowship so to be in the fellowship what you have to do you have to confess your sins in the privacy of your priesthood to God the Father directly it's not to anyone that's what it says in the third class condition of the Greek if you may or you may not confess but the fact is God is faithful and righteous not only to forgive your sins but to cleanse you from all of your unrighteousness for which Christ has paid for it on the cross and there is no such thing that you are going to be paying a penance by doing good works by doing XYZ no you go privately and you pay and you confess your sins you directly cite homologa in the Greek it meant to say to repeat the same thing what you have told so you go and you confess your sins there back and you come and you be in fellowship with God so that God the Holy Spirit will control only a person who is clean until unless he is clean God the Holy Spirit will never control such person and such kind of person will never have the information that thing is true for the believers but whereas when you consider the unbelievers like this cult of Sheikh Hamad Didat if not this Zakir Naik or other things who claim about the divinity and the deity of Christ and replace them or repudiate them and reject Christ as their savior such people are not even born again they are still in the dichotomy nature they are having a body and a soul but whereas we the believers are having a body and a soul and a human spirit and if this human spirit is not activated uh, if this human spirit is not been controlled by God the Holy Spirit then even there is no difference between you and the unbeliever because there at least that guy doesn't know how to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ but you knowing to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ you don't know the standard operating procedure wherein you can get in the word of God wherein you can learn the word of God wherein you can grow up in the word of God that's the reason we find many morons in this Christendom that's the reason we find there is no accuracy of teaching in the word of God that's why we, we find so many people with only a, a, a drop of doctrine and the, the, they don't even have a bucket full of doctrine drawn from the ocean which is the Bible doctrine and right past the teacher wherein he has to train faithfully in the church to preach the word of God that is his ministry as per we find in 1 Corinthians 4 2 saying that the ministers ought to be faithful we have to have record of them and the same thing it says in 1 Timothy 3 15 that a church is a ground and pillar of truth the same thing we find in Hebrews chapter 3 saying that Moses was faithful in all the house but Christ is more faithful among all of them and when we find the second Peter we find a mandate given to us that we have to faithfully handle the word so faithfulness is the order of day and consistency of persistence to get in the word of God day in and day out and teaching them and training them up as per 2 Peter 3.18 it went to say that grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and which demands consistency, consistency, consistency and persistence and inculcation, inculcation by the right pastor teacher who could train you up, who could train you up from the deep standards of the word from the bottom and take you to the highest of the things the length, the breadth, the height and the width and that cannot be possible until unless you confess your sins and be rebound and you could be under the controlling mental ministry of God the Holy Spirit because for a pastor teacher the right mentor divine mentor is Lord God the Holy Spirit and for the congregation the right mentor is the right pastor teacher to the right congregation and those who follow the mandates of the Bible very accurately as we see in the history has been followed by some of the brethren by some of the Baptists who are very very good in the doctrine but now everything has been gone down so you as an unbeliever, you don't know what is happening exactly in the Christendom, the rules and the regulations have to be taught, or the system and the, or the standard operating procedure for which God could have communion with you and he could teach you the things, and you just claim by reading some of the scripts, and you said in one of your video that Christ said very clearly, it's not me who's going to judge, it is God the Father, and I'm going to do what is going to send to me, what the fool you are to understand the scripture, and you caught that. 
you think in your intellectual exercise you can quote that very clearly and say that this is very clearly for you and to understand it's very clear in the bible what that 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 christ has just come to do the will of the father he's not god you fool can't you understand the divine communication demands the holy spirit to be communicated and god the father god the son and god the holy spirit who has been anthropopathism or anthropomorphism for us to understand to in our terms in our terms to understand that he had a superior one which meant to say that even we have a superior one in the father and which doesn't mean to say that the both the, the, the three are different the three are different in personalities but one in essence and is trying to guide you the way how we have to follow the precepts to approach god the father and not only that it is until and unless the divine mandate which is aligning with the divine and absolute standard righteousness of god the father whatsoever you preach whatsoever you teach whatsoever even a single word you speak you have to be very cautious just because you are have to be answerable to god it is not that we just brag around in the proclaiming of our good news it's not just we we, we just whatever is proclaim the good news or we just say such and such is wrong such and such is right no we have to be in align with the word of god because for every word we speak we have to be answerable to god so that's what lord jesus christ has dogmatically and emphatically told to us saying that what god the father intends me to speak or his direction or his precept which are in align to his absolute standard righteousness that's what even me being the member of the trinity i'm following that for you and it's an example and he says it is not who i'm going to judge the world but the words which are spoken to you that is what it is going to judge the world he didn't say the words which father has spoken through me he says very clearly the words which i have spoken to you can you understand there the deity of our lord jesus christ you being in darkness what can you understand the spiritual things of the mist and the deep mystery things of the word of god which the gospel of deity itself is called as john's gospel and he quote from that how foolish you are how stupid you are taking the subject out of the context and proclaiming yourself like a jackass that has been a prophecy for you from lord yahweh itself from the bible you shall put in among hand among all and all other hands will be among you that is the prophecy you have you are better off with your mamadinism you are better off with your things be there do not try to indulge into the word of god which is a true which is alive and powerful which will just burn you off you don't even dare to stand before that you don't even dare to take that word in your tongue it will burn you you might be thinking that you are alive but you think and you be very cautious that you are spiritually dead no matter tomorrow you die without accepting lord jesus christ as a savior without believing in the saving work of christ on the cross you shall be put into the eternal lake of fire which is absolutely sure and you want to know what is the fire what you want to know what is the hell take it into compartments the word is been divided into the gehenna of the greek into four parts the first part is called as a paradise the second part is called as tartarus the third part is called as torments and the fourth part is called as eternal hell the paradise is the place where a believer who believed in the lord jesus christ and who have been kept there as an abode till christ could resurrect and ascend into the heaven because he was the first person after in the being a humanity form to go to and stand and sit behind the right, beside the right hand of god the father until then no person was been taken to the heaven it was after the resurrection and ascension of our lord jesus christ that he took the entire believers right from the adam till to his movement and then he went and took them to the right hand of god the father that is the first portion called as paradise and you want to know what is the second portion called as tartarus tartarus is the place where the angelic infiltration took place these are the angels who had who cohabited with the human race to infiltrate their integrity of the genetic codes so that they could not get a savior into this earth and this were the angels whom god encapsulated and kept them in the places of dark pits so that they could be kept for and reserved for the day of judgment and it is a symbolization to the false teachers and false cults like you that even if you proclaim such kind of things which are not in accord to the word of god god is going to punish you very clearly and it's just an example for you for those angels we did not spare the angels and how less for less for you even being a false teacher of the word of god and even being for false cults like you in the word of god 
so the false teachers were also there and preserved and kept and the fallen angels have been kept in the second department called as tartarus so tartarus is the place where the fallen angels who infiltrated the genetic code so these were the angels from whom god has taken away the sexual ability likewise while our lord jesus christ on this earth he says in the gospel of matthew in the heaven there is no one all are like angels there will be no given for marriage nor be taken in the marriage it meant to say even the operating demons who are there quite present now they have been taken out the power of procreation from them the nephilim which the bible translate as a great ones it doesn't mean to say they are great it meant to say the fallen ones and many of the myths of the old testament not not of the old testament in the history of the greek we find like the hercules or a hero of god or something like that the claim that their mother is a human one and the father is a angelic one but in the flood all of them they have been put to death and that is the grace provision of god for us to save to come to the gracious savior of our lord on this earth and while in gospel chapter 12 was 35 of john the people claim christ is going to stay forever how is this that have you said that you are going to be put on the cross then christ claims and tells to them i am here and the light is here a little while the light is going to stay here and if you do not believe in that light you shall be put into utter darkness and from them he hid and he went off because he knew that if he could be brought into them the purpose of dying on the cross would not be happening there there is the reason he hid himself and went so that the ministry of god the holy spirit could be continued and at the same time he could get us into salvation by believing in the lord jesus christ and he could complete the work for which has come upon this earth so satan is always having a strategy right from the beginning of the creation of mankind so that adam and eve could be deceived and they fell and and through cain who was an unbelieving person could kill abel they are also deceived and then it went on to take the place upon the angelic infiltration by claiming even if the genes have been not human that's what we find in the promise of genesis 3:15 the seed of the woman seed it meant to say the last adam the last adam is lord jesus christ and of the woman it meant to say in the form of a flesh pure flesh that's what we find the prophecies in the book of isaiah saying that he was came in the form of a lamb a sheer who was not claiming at all anything he just kept quiet so he came in the form of a flesh and pure flesh was needed not any angelic angelic infiltration in that so the torments is the place where it has been kept and reserved for these fallen angels and for such kind of false cults who claim and they shall be put into the lake of fire of the fourth division but in the third division you have something called as the torments that has been kept and reserved for unbelievers and for such kind of people who do not believe in the lord jesus christ and who claim and replacing or repudiate the saving work of lord jesus christ on the cross the third division is also most important so the hell or the his divided into so many parts the first one is called as a paradise and it has been empty and after the resurrection of our lord jesus christ christ went to preach to the tartarus saying that your your plan your fallen angels plan has been totally destroyed and it is me who has won in the cross and the angelic conflict is totally resolved and henceforth so believe in the lord jesus christ he shall be saved that's what we find in ephesians chapter 4 verses 8 and 9 I'm quoting these verses today so that you could understand in the reference to the context of the subject so that tomorrow if you have any false interpretation about this you could come and you could understand the things very clearly. And the fourth thing is the eternal lake of fire which has been kept after the second advent of Lord Jesus Christ of the white throne judgment where in whosoever believes whosoever fails to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and believes himself in his good works that he could be saved shall be put into the eternal lake of fire forever and forever. I think these things are most important for you to understand. so you being a dichotomous in nature you think that you can understand the things of the word of god you can claim the things contrary to the word of god you you think that you are great in intelligence you think you can do very well you think by ripping out of the context you can teach and you can train them up no 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 repent change your mind learn the word of god in the illumination of god the holy spirit after you believe in the lord jesus christ so that your human spirit get activated and god the holy spirit controls you so that you can understand the things and the deep mystery things of the word of god and just don't proclaim like a mad dog among the streets and say that lord jesus christ did not come in the form of a divinity he is just like a man who came and he went 
Christ came in the form of a divine nature so that he is the only manifested man of the Trinity to come in the form of a flesh so that he could die for you and for me on the cross and he could solve the angelic conflict so that whosoever believes in him shall never perish but have an everlasting life. That's the fulfillment of Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. And right from the beginning, Satan has an attack so that there could be no pure line. But God in grace found in Genesis chapter 6, Noah, who was a heralder of righteousness, not the preacher, which is wrong in the translation of the Hebrew. It meant to say he was a herald, like an evangelist who is doing now, like the same time, who teaches to the congregation of four or five people or ten people. And you know how many converts were there in those 120 years of preaching? If there were only eight, including his wife and the three children and his three wives. That's the hardness for the people to understand the true gospel. That is what is happening even today among so many believers among the Christendom to oppose the truth and to follow which is false. Trying to enter the heaven from the huge and big gate and not to follow the heaven in the narrow gate where few, few people can follow that. And the few people can follow only in that because it is too hard for them to know the truth. And always Lord has said, though they have done so many miracles, they could understand. They couldn't understand those things as Prophet Isaiah has proclaimed because their heart has been hardened and their eyes have been closed with the darkness so that they should not see and shine the true gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what it is happening even today in today's Christendom that there are no people who want to preach the accurate word, word for the word, but they're following the world instead of the word and saying that the word can be proclaimed to the world and claiming everything to be sheer rot. They say the world is enough for us, not the word, but the word itself is there for them to judge at the evaluation throne of Christ. So dear brethren, be careful for the things what you're proclaiming, be careful for the things what you're preaching, because it is not your own human interpretation what you preach, it is the mentor ministry of God the Holy Spirit to teach you the things which are quite essential for you, so that whatsoever Lord God the Holy Spirit proclaims through you, for each and every word you are quite answerable, and you are quite responsible to answer those things before God, and answering this cult is nothing for you when you grow up in the Word, because we want the members of the human race to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, but at the same time we want the members of believers to be as a pivot by learning and growing up in the world. This cult claim because our people couldn't answer them. This cult reproduce, reproduce the tapes again and again so that the believers could be disturbed. And the problem with the believers is, first of all, they don't have proper volition or interest to know the Word of God. And second thing, they don't have proper teachers who could teach them from the original language of the Scriptures. And in one of the tapes, Mr. Zachary Mike claims, Bible as sons of God in the tons in the Bible. But it meant to say, you fool, Bena or Elohim in the Hebrew, who, the one who knows the Hebrew could understand that has been used only for the angels. And in the entire Old Testament, you have only four times used in the Genesis and in the Job three times, and it meant to use only for the angels, and apart from the angels, it has never been used for the man. How could he claim all these things? But when you come to the New Testament, Yuhoi, in the New Testament of the Greek, it meant to say, the one who believes in the Lord has been named as the Son of God, after the resurrection and ascension of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And you claim, I am the with the truth and the life, what Lord, Lord Jesus Christ has said, that during that time, Lord Jesus Christ was away. What a foolish person you are. I know you may not understand the Greek or the Hebrew, or you may just claim the words of the Hebrew and the Greek, and you think that you know the understanding of the Scriptures. Don't be in error of that, and don't be in try to lead a multitude of Muslim believers, because they also have said, Abraham as a friend of God, in Hamar Rahim El Hiel. It meant to say that a friend of God by the Mohammedanian and inscripted in one of the remains beside the Dead Sea, what we find, wherein in Genesis chapter 3 we find the place where he has been taken to bury his wife called Asara. Even you Muhammad people call him as Hamar Rahim, Amar, Amar, Hamar Rahim El Elhi. It meant to say friend of God. Even Muhammad himself has told Abraham is a friend of God. And when he is a friend of God, he could attend that righteousness by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, a great prophet would going to come, as been told by Moses. And the great prophet, whosoever doesn't believe to him, shall be put into the eternal destruction, or totally be destroyed from the glory and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And why you want to take these multitudes of Muslims into such kind of a hell because of your false understanding of the scriptures, false interpretation of the scriptures, and not to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and replace and repudiate Lord Jesus Christ with your false errors of understanding. So dear brethren, Zachary Nayak, I know big Christians love you. We are not claiming the things 
which are there for you, but you're trying the answer from the Word of God, wherein you're having your false in error of understanding, because you're still spiritually dead. And the spiritually dead person cannot understand the deep things or the mystery things of the Word of God. And it is not possible for you to understand them until unless you have been born again. So it's a sincere and humble request from us so that you could believe in the Lord Jesus Christ by the simple act of faith. And that's the gospel, that He is the one, He is the way, the truth, and the life. Until unless you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall never be saved. And if you have not been saved, apart live that, you cannot even know the things of the Word because you're still a dichotomy in nature. And the person who is a dichotomy in nature is going to end up in tormentors. And the one who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. You have to be turned from dichotomy to the trichotomy. And as we continue this subject tomorrow with, with other things, we shall have uh, more understanding of the word. And I even ask my br fellow brethren to understand the deep things of mystery, uh, mystery doctrine of the church age as we continue in this step. So, Father, we thank you for the privilege that they've given to us to have fellowship with you with the word. We ask that God the Holy Spirit enlighten the things so that Christ Jesus might be glorified, not only in this event, but the things that have been coming. For asking in Christ's name, Father, Amen.